Hello, my name is Sarah, and this is Emmy. And today I have one last Christmas present to make, although you're not gonna see this video before Christmas because it's technically after Christmas, everyone got sick. The beginning of 2022, I made myself a color-changing Sleeping Beauty dress, and I had some fabric left over, so I'm gonna use this to make my niece a color-changing Sleeping Beauty dress today. I got a bit of a late start though because uh, the lake is frozen, so we took a little break to go ice skate. I folded what was left of my fabric into quarters since I am doing a circle skirt. I adjusted it to fit the length with as much left over as possible for the bodice. I used a silver sharpie to mark it just like last time, although now I'm remembering that I marked it on the back, so I switched to the black one. The marks won't be seen anyway. Much better. This fabric frays like crazy, so I immediately surged this edge. Ideally, you would let a circle skirt hang for a couple of days so the fabric on the angle can stretch and then recut it, but I didn't have that kind of time. I ironed it, however, I never got this fabric to press nicely for my dress and I was afraid of melting it. See this decision? That was the wrong one. So I pinned most of that trim on. And then I remembered this is the wrong trim and this is the right trim. <laughs> Whoops. And unpinned all of it. I hand stitched all of my trim and it took days, so I used my machine and stitched along both edges of the trim. It still took forever though. I'm trying to make her the most sparkly dress I can though, so I persevered. I switched to my zipper foot so I could get really close to the beads. After a ridiculous amount of time sewing on this trim, I did finish it last night and I was going to do the bodice, but I've changed my plans a little bit. I want to have the center piece be a different piece so I can add some fun overlay on it. I just need the bodice pieces. I will trace those and get started on the bodice. I made sure that the grain line is vertical and cut. I roughly trimmed some gold overlay and pinned it to the centerpiece. If it's not clear by now, I'm trying to make this as glittery as possible because I know my target audience. I basted this onto the fashion fabric and trimmed off the excess. And now they act as one piece. I'm making a bit of modification on the back. Instead of having these be two separate pieces and a zipper in the back, I like to have kids' dresses be elastic so they can get them on and off without any help from an adult. So I'm going to fold this back when I cut it so there's going to be a chunk here for me to do the shearing on. Unfortunately, this fancy fabric isn't strong enough to have the elastic shearing on it. It's rather delicate, so I use the lining fabric instead. I cut the same pattern out of black satin for the lining. Bodice assembly montage! I ironed all my seams. Lovely. And the lining. So I'm going to stitch here, not this chunk, and here, so that I can sew this strap from the inside and then just hand stitch a little bit. Hopefully that works. It was in the instructions that I actually read, which is rare. <laughs> After stitching, I clipped all my curves. I matched up the outside strap with the outside and the lining with the lining. If that's confusing, then join the club because I'm also missing something. Hindsight is 2020. I stitched this and tried to turn it right side out. Keyword, tried. Oh no, I've done the thing. So I grabbed my handy dandy seam ripper and my if you see a seam ripper now is not a good time shirt and got to work. I turned it right side out before pinning and stitching again. Much better. Did that work out any better? No, of course not. Oh no! <laughs> no! Come on! Alright, third time's the charm, I hope. Finally! I tried to invisibly stitch this closed, but the fabric is so delicate, I thought it would stand up better to a four year old playing with a whip stitch. Alright, I'm gonna do the elastic shearing now, so I'm gonna cut out a strip that is this tall and so elastic to the back of it, I'm going to cut it to be twice this length. I stretched the elastic while sewing a zigzag stitch 
and I repeated this about every inch. My elastic panel here ended up being the exact right measurement, which was funny because I did not measure it at all. Someone is bored. So I'm going to go ahead and sandwich it between the outside fabric and the lining of the bodice. The base bodice is done, and the skirt is done, and someone needs a W-A-L-K. I got out this, it's actually a bridal train that I thrifted and then chopped up. She's very dramatic. Uh, and I was going to use this because it's really nice satin, but it's really thick, and um, this fabric is also very thick, so I'm going to try and find a lighter weight satin, and then I can do the peplum and the shoulder piece after a W-A-L-K. I found a lightweight satin which made a huge mess. I cut a 3 inch wide strip and angled the center a bit and cut it to length. I cut a second 3 inch strip for the back. Oh, this is gonna be a mess. I pinned them right sides together and stitched. My poking stick has disappeared, so I'm just gonna wing it. Using a marker was not a good idea since the cap did come off. Luckily, it's disappearing ink. <sighs> Eventually, I ironed it. I hand stitched on the white and some trim left over from my dress. Whoa. Okay, bye clip. finished sewing all the trim by hand, um, but the sun is setting and I'm getting a message that uh, I have uh, other things I need to do now, so I'm going to finish this tonight. Hi. For the peplums, I layered fabric three times and grabbed my favorite pattern weight and cut out the petal shapes. I serged the edges, folded them over once, and added a gold lace on top. I pinned them to the bodice, centering them to the front and to the sides under the watchful eyes of my assistant. I basted this before pinning it onto the skirt. One last seam and the dress was done! I dropped another pin. This was a big hit. If you like this, make sure to check out my dress video.